you know, we can start, I think. All right. Okay. So today's topic is basically how to offload wrong learning tasks uh, into salary workers. In fast API, we already have uh, background tasks that runs the task in the same process that the server is running. But uh, we use Celery because we want to offload the task to some, let's say, some other server. Or uh, it can spawn multiple processes, and it can handle those tasks properly and uh, report back to Redis. All right. So this is a normal diagram of how it works. So uh, the Celery client that we are using inside the fast API to the send the tasks to task QE. So that QE spawns uh, the Celery worker, uh, picks up those tasks from the RabbitMQ, and uh, it uh, does those tasks. Uh, it processes this, and it reports those uh, result into the cache backend that is the Redis or RabbitMQ server. OK. So this is the general uh, thing, how it works. So for our demonstration, I do not have Docker in my machine. So for Redis, uh, I'm using this uh, Redis Online Cloud. So we get a free password and a free instance of Redis with one connection. Yeah. So I'm using this one uh, to get the things initiated, right? So what the task uh, project structure is. So this is the previous, uh, I gave a uh, session previously. This is the Instagram clone that uh, we discussed. And there is authentication here with JWT and uh, whatnot. So everything is implemented. So now uh, I created a new route. So if I go to the main file, you see that I'm importing the routes from different uh, routers. So comment router, task routers, authentication routers, post routers, and I'm importing them. And just like that, I included that uh, task router here. So fine. So inside the task route, what is there? So slash tasks would be uh, the path for it. And I am just creating for now a division task. So divide. It takes two parameters. So if I go to the task request divide schema, so first is an integer, second is also an integer, right? So it takes it. And if this endpoint need to be authenticated. So the get current user from token, this is something we implemented in the previous session that I took, that uh, get from the JWT token properly get give me the user object uh, so OAuth to the OAuth to scheme is implemented in this uh, get current user token so by proxy whenever i implement this current user from token method in any as a dependency is any method that is a route uh, that route is automatically authenticated route okay so if i go in this task qe folder i can see there is a qe.py file so here I uh, imported Celery. So I think I'm using Celery version. Let's check. So I'm using Celery version 5.2. Uh, so if you guys try this on your own, uh, maybe try with 5.2 uh, because uh, that is the I work with. So here you can see the Redis backend uh, connection string. So how this works. So the username is default. That is coming from this Redis uh, cloud. So if I go and the security, the username is default. And the password is this. So I'm using that username and password string. So username, colon, the password, after that, uh, at the rate and then the total rate is uh, domain with the proper port and after that slash zero 
So we have to use this. So we have to use this uh, in this uh, broker and backend URL also. So the salary can connect to it, basically. All right. So here I have the Insta backend. So I have the fast API set up. So what is happening? So it is creating a salary object. And I'm defining a salary task that is basically a, a divide task. And it is returning a JSON that is with the result. And this is, we, we will run a salary instance of this. And I'm here importing this salary object and this task from task QV inside our tasks route that we defined in our fast API section. All right. Uh, so, okay. So then, uh, I'm uh, executing that task. So delay is the thing that offload the the offloads the task to uh, a Redis server. And whenever uh, uh, the, the salary is running, it is it picks up the task definition and whatever is needed from the Redis. And it processes it. And it uh, saves that into the same cache backend. OK. So here what I'm doing. So I'm getting, I'm using the divide tasks and the request dot first and request a second. We're getting the first and second uh, integer from the schema that we define task divide, right? And I'm getting the task object. Now by default task object will be pending because uh, in the salary, I have defined time dot sleep five seconds, so it won't be executed right away. So it would take around let's say ten seconds to execute the task. So we are simulating a long running task. So whatever it can be. So inside the salary, I am saving the task ID. So this is the async ID, right? So I'm so this is the task's uh, reference. So let's say I executed some uh, file downloading task. So the server backend needs to know ki which task corresponds to me. So in that case, I'm getting the task ID that is the async ID. And I'm saving that task ID with it in a table that is uh, called DB tasks. So DB task, what does it have? Uh, it is It has a user uh, foreign key. It has an ID that is uh, self-incrementing, an async ID, and a user ID. So so basically, async ID and the user ID that we mostly need. Right? So we are saving that. And uh, let me just delete the previous database that the SQLite TV. So it will create a fresh one. So we are creating, uh, we're saving the data information. Like uh, I created the tasks. So save the task with my user user ID. So we can later check that uh, this user executed these tasks, and we can get the result back from the uh, backend. So in this, uh, in this, uh, basically uh, endpoint, we're getting the result, and here we're passing the async ID. So we can make it a get request. We're passing the async ID, and. Uh, we are using the same salary instance that we defined in this queue. Uh, so this salary uh, instance that we're importing in here, using the same salary instance, and we are getting the async result. So it will go into the Redis server and search for the uh, executed task result uh, with the async ID and give us the task result. And it will have the task result that is returned from here. Okay, so that is the uh, use case of it. So let's for now uh, run the salary worker. So not not this one. This is Instagram backend. So this is the command. So what I'm doing? Uh, so I'm inside the Insta backend. So in this folder. In this folder level, I'm here. And here I am uh, saying that salary 
and inside the task QV folder in with the QV file execute the salary variable use the salary variable that the salary instance so inside this task QV folder uh, the QV file and the salary variable use that as a worker and run on log level info and this pool solo is needed to run this salary on uh, salary worker in windows basically so this pool solo is not needed if you're running on unix or linux this is a bug in windows that uh, this pool solo we have to use so if i run this it will connect to the redis backend so it connected to the redis backend with the default username and the password uh, so now salary is running so it is checking if other salary workers are up so it is uh, it will automatically pick up neighbors so for now let's let's try one thing let's let's manually try to add tasks okay so i will just in the insta backend folder i will just type python and i will say from task qv dot QV import divide. So we are getting the divide task, right? So salary is independent of any API. So we do not need fast API per se to use salary. So I'm here. So I will just say task divide dot delay. And I will pass two integer values, let's say three and four. So I will just press enter. So it is offloaded into Redis server. So if I check task.status, it is still pending because it will wait for 10 seconds before executing the task. Now it is uh, executed successfully. So the task is executed and now if i check task dot result we can see four divided by the three so three divided by four is 0 0.75 so we're getting the result so uh, it supports json data returning okay so this we are we get a task reference uh, whenever we uh, use delay command with the salary task so in here like what we are doing so we, whenever we're executing from a backend, so we cannot uh, store the task reference per se. We have to store the task ID, so the async ID. So just like that, we're saving that async ID with the user ID. And it is also returning this endpoint after executing, it is returning the async ID. So uh, we can use that async ID to call on result method and get the data oh so let's run this so i'm running with uv icon so okay so if i go in this backend so it was already opened let me just refresh it okay so you can see the tasks endpoints are authenticated so the create task is authenticated, but the fetching of task is not authenticated. So there is no uh, lock sign in there. Uh, but if I do this, current user, user auth depends on this. Just add this here. It will be automatically a authenticated endpoint. Uh, follow this, it will be, it will change. So now this get endpoint is also authenticated. So we cannot directly call it. Uh, we have to log in first. So we have to click on authorize. So there was a default user created called cat. So I will just authorize it. Okay. So no user is there. So basically I deleted the database. So we will create a user. User, let's say, Shant, not Shantanu. Let's go for cat. Something small that you can type over and over again. 
so user is created yeah so now if i go here and click on authorize and click on cat and here password for cat and click on authorize so now we are authorized okay cool so now i want to create a new division task so i will go here and the schema already tells us there it needs first and second numbers so let's say 200 divided by 137 i will execute this task so it offloaded it into redis and it gave us the task id so if i go into the task result api and paste and execute it so it gave us the result because 10 seconds has passed. So success, the result is 1.45 something. So this is how Celery works basically. Nothing super duper special here. Uh, so it saves those data into uh, Redis backend. So that the Redis backend that I'm using from here. And it fetches those data with the async uh, result with the proper async ID. So we have to save the async ID corresponding to the user uh, or whatever tasks that is being created, right? Right. So uh, we can define some other endpoints also. So let's define another salary task. So salary dot task. So let's import requests. So I will close the salary instance for now because it does not have the request module installed. And I will close this backend process also. Okay. So by default, we, as I said, we are running in the salary instance in the same server, but uh, this is not a good practice to run it on the same server. What we do, I will tell you guys uh, that how to use this on a different server and still get the results. So the worker instance is working on a different server, a salary uh, task offloader. And it is uh, so that server is dedicated to long running tasks. So it, though no burden comes into our own server that is running the web, 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 web instance. So let's define uh, get some. HTML. So now what we will do? We will get an URL here. We require a URL and we get a response from calling requests dot get and to some some website. So that's a Wikipedia where I'm going to get. So Wikipedia. Okay, let's say avatar, we have water. So this, uh, let's say URL, we, we need to get. So it is passing the URL here. And it is storing the response and return. Result. And response dot text. So it is basically uh, storing the text and uh, in the cache backend and it will return it okay so we have a salary uh, task so we need to accommodate for this uh, using our api also so let's create a new interface so router dot post let's do a get request because we are not uh, So it will be a fetch web, let's say. Okay. And we are defining a function API fetch um, data. Right. And we need a schema for this. Uh, so let's make a schema. 
So let's go to the schema spy class. URL request schema, it takes in base model and it will be a new URL with a string. Okay, so we're done. So we will import that schema. So from schema import URL request schema. Now we will use that schema here. So first, URL request schema. We will authenticate this endpoint also. We need only authenticated users to access this. All right. So we are done on the endpoint end. Now we need to import that task. So, so what was the task? The QV gets some HTML. So get some HTML. Now what we will do, we will say task is equal to get some HTML and request dot URL. We're passing that. Uh, but get some HTML dot delay we have to add, otherwise it will directly call the function. And we get an async ID. That is task dot ID. And we create a task and return the so we create a task for the user in the database and we return the async ID. So our interface is done uh, to fetch the data from web. So let's try it. So let's run Celery. So I think all files are saved. No, task queue is not saved. Shantanu, one thing. You yeah, are, yeah. So DB, DB in that. Mm -hmm. In line number 30, you are not pass DB variable. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. My oversight. Thank you. Sorry. And to get the DB, get DB function also. Yeah, now it is fine. Okay, so let's, uh, everything is saved, I think. Now let's go and run the salary worker. Okay, so no module is named requests. Pip install requests. So it connected to the Redis and it is running. So let's go in here and run our API. And let's go to the fast API and Let's refresh it. Let's see if we need authentication. Yeah. So we're authenticated. Now, if I go down, I can see there is a option called, called fetch web. So I will just give this URL here in this string. And I will just execute it. So it gave me this uh, async ID. So I'll just copy it. And our results endpoint, I will try it out. And I will paste it here and let's check. So it gave all the HTML from that page. So you can see in the result, the whole fetched HTML from the Wikipedia page. So this is basically how Celery works. Uh, and there is also something called flower uh, that uh, you can see the tasks that are being executed, the failed tasks in a UI manner. So it queries the Redis instance and it shows you all those tasks. But uh, since this Redis, 
is a free Redis uh, instance. Uh, we cannot use two clients simultaneously. So the Celery is using it. So we cannot uh, use the uh, Flower instance also. So basically, for Flower now, we have to use something like this. So we have to open another command window. So uh, and we have to run this. So let me show you what happens. Let me open another command window. Activate it, and if I run it, it will say fail to connect to. Okay, no flower is not installed. Sorry, if install flower. Yeah, now if I run this, it will say, yeah, failed <laughs> because it cannot max number of clients reached from it is uh, sending that from the Redis uh, instance. So nothing can be done uh, for now. But if the flower was properly executed, it would look something like this. So I have the documentation window opened of flower. So it it, in the worker, it would show the salary worker. So we have only one worker of salary. So it would show would have shown salary one dot local or something. Okay. And in the task section, it will show all those started, inactive, or success or failed tasks. And it we can get the UUID from here, tasks UUID. So this is basically for uh, monitoring uh, in a UI manner for flower. So just like we ran the celery, we have to also run an instance of flower. But since we have the limitation of only one database of uh, one connection to our Redis DB, so we cannot show it in this machine right now. Right. So now a really important thing uh, that somebody can ask, OK, so Shantanu, you are showing me this uh, celery in the same machine in the same server. So what if I want to? Use a different machine for salary. Hello, Shantanu. Uh, we are not able to hear you. OK, 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 OK. OK, now it is OK? Yeah. OK, sorry. sorry. So uh, last one minute, uh, we were not able to hear you. OK, OK, OK. I, I will repeat it. No yeah, problem. please repeat. Yeah. So basically, when Celery, uh, let's say we want to implement Celery in a different server, so that is the main point of Celery, because we want to offload everything into a different server. So in that case, uh, we have to uh, copy this task queue to a different server where Celery is installed, and we have to run it. OK, we have to run it. That the task definitions are defined, and uh, so it connects to the same backend. So now what happens? We have to come back to our web server, but we have to define this Celery, but we do not run the worker here in our, in our server, web server. But we use the salary backend uh, to offload the tasks. So everything will be same, but we do not run the salary worker like we are running in here our in our web server. So in this, we, we will do this thing in our offloaded server that we want to execute our long running tasks. So in that case, 
we are importing the salary and the methods in our uh, in the, the tasks in our uh, task queue we're offloading it but we are not executing the, those tasks so they are just stored into redis but which salary instance the, the the other server that is running the salary worker that this this worker uh, that we're running here it will run on the different server in that case it will pick up those tasks from redis and it will execute and store those data into redis and whenever we use async result with this salary instance so then we will get that those results from redis so basically this is how it happens so uh, two salary instances need to be connected to the same redis server uh, whenever a task is sent to redis one salary worker picks it up uh, does the task saves it another salary instance we're not running the worker here it just gives us the async result and so his task is offloading the task and getting the result and other one that is running the worker it is picking up the task from reddit that is and it is uh, executing it so this is how it works nothing too special but sometimes we need these type of things uh, and not the background so uh, fast api has a background task but it, as I said, it runs on the same process. It, we cannot run multiple processes and it hinders down the server. So we need to use something like this. So in Django, uh, the coupling is really easy, but fast API, we have to like uh, use flower or something to see the results and whatnot, right? So any questions? So uh, I am ready for questions. So then. All right, I see no questions here. So uh, this is, I think, everything I needed to uh, demonstrate. So nothing uh, too special, uh, but this was the curriculum that I defined. And if you guys have no questions, I think uh, then we can conclude it, right? So you can accurate multiple tasks, as I said, for different things. Or as long as the libraries are installed on the worker end, the worker that is running the salary worker it has all those libraries properly installed and imported even though those libraries uh, are not installed in the server the web server it will properly run it okay so let's say this is the ta salary definition that is running on the uh, server uh, the salary worker that is running on the different server and another instance is running on the web server so we can easily get it. All right. I think I'm done. Uh, learning and development has joined or it has dropped off. Thank you, Chantra. Yeah, thanks.